We're at the pyramids of Meroe, the graves of the kings and of the queens of Meroe in northern Sudan along the river Nile. An empire which stretched from here in Sudan all the way to Jerusalem, to the southern Lebanon, where the 25th dynasty of the pharaohs was contesting the world with the Assyrians. So we're in a very, very historic place, in a very symbolic place as well for this ancient civilization of Sudan. What's not obvious is the diversity of the people, first of all, but also the diversity of the landscapes, from a basically tropical, uh, full of water south to a desert. This is one thing. The other thing is also the depth of history. It's easy to hear that, yes, there are more pyramids in Sudan than in Egypt, but you really have to ask people and to read up in order to understand, if you're not a specialist of this history, in order to understand what this actually represents here. And it's not just the place we are here now at simply one of the great civilizations of this world, which has conquered and defended and conquered again and lost and conquered again big swaths of the antique world and who has measured itself against the other big civilizations at the time. And somehow, there is no way this cannot have an impact until today. And I think that's part of what you feel simply if you walk around but you need to dig a little bit, or to travel a little bit, to places where hardly ever anybody comes to, like the one we are here. The heart of an ancient super kingdom. In Sudan you can walk in Khartoum at night, you can sit down anywhere, drink coffee or a tea, and nobody will bother. Not because they ignore you or they disrespect you, but they don't bother you. You're just, you're just part of being there, and that's fine for everybody. It's this incredibly generous, open-hearted atmosphere of, of people who are just, just incredibly nice. I have not seen that anywhere else. Uh, and it's something I personally have the impression nobody knows who has not been to Sudan. You really have to be here to understand what, what, what it means to encounter people who are so at ease with themselves and that they can be so generous with everybody else. It's fascinating, it's absolutely fascinating. We have seen over recent decades a brutal civil war in the south which has led to the split up of the country in, in two. Then everybody is aware of Darfur uh, with untold suffering. Uh, and we are still in a situation where you have, both in Darfur, uh, ongoing remnants of this big conflict. It's smaller now, but it's still there. And where you have, uh, in the south of, of, of Sudan, in, in two states, Blue Nile and South Kordofan particularly, where you have a combination of displacement, refugees and ongoing fighting, which continues to affect tens and hundreds of thousands of people in this country. Yes, we are uh, assisting with food. Yes, we're assisting with health or education or bringing families back together. But in the end, it's about the dignity of the people. Uh, where you see it maybe most, in the work we're doing here in Sudan, most immediately is when somebody who cannot walk anymore because he or she lost a leg, 
uh, is then suddenly able to lead a normal life because this limb has been artificially replaced and it's not artificial dignity, it's real dignity but through an artificial means. So this giving back some self-respect to people who have gone through the worst in life uh, is something which, which makes you get up in the morning and want to do more of that. What gives me, in the end, the, 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 the biggest joy is to be able to make a difference for, for individuals, for, for an individual human being who, who is affected by a horrible environment. Yes, we do work for numbers, but in the end you, you look at the difference you can make to one person and to these many one-persons.